Well, here's the good news, Sim Gamers. We've managed to. Um, complete this mission and get a bunch of science along the way. In fact, we can transmit that science. Uh, but here's the bad news. This ship does not have enough Delta V to reach orbit. So we have set up a rescue situation for Bill Kerman. Hello, Sim Gamers. Welcome to some bonus content for Kerbal Space Program 2 early access for science. I cannot describe what this game has done to me. I am binge playing it. I haven't binge played a game like this since Baldur's Gate 3 came out. Leave a comment down below if you play Baldur's Gate 3 and who your favorite character is. Or if you watch anyone play Baldur's Gate 3 and you're like, I'm particularly um, interested in this character. We've got someone to rescue on Duna. Um, that's what today's task is all about. Everything else, secondary. So let's go to the vehicle assembly. Actually, we have 3,026 research to spend. Let's go to the R&D center and spend that. I'm curious, what does tier three get us? Heavy rocketry. This we start getting to some insanely large rockets. Heavy launchers. Oversized mono P. I don't think we're there yet. Got some xenon promotion propulsion for some highly efficient satellite stuff. Precise propulsion gives us some interesting options. These aren't to, to particularly efficient uh, rockets. They're all sustainers. But the fact that they can be positioned on the sides of uh, uh, Radially mounted really easily. Makes them really good for things like like uh, sky cranes. But the thing I think I want to dig towards more than anything ooh, medium payloads could be good. Alright, let's dig through this enhanced coupling. New stack decoupler sizes, stack separator sizes. Precision machining, medium payloads. Landing utilities, heavy landings, medium payloads. And sure, modular launchers so we can, can keep on working our way up the tire, higher end of this tech tree. Tier three unlocked. Let me talk you through this uh, Duna Rescue Mission build. The first thing we're working on here basically is the uh, main mission stage. This stage is going to be responsible for landing on Duna, uh, picking up Bill, and taking off from Duna, and reaching, basically reaching uh, Duna orbit. So we're going to start by checking the numbers to make sure, one, does it have enough Delta V in the Duna environment? And uh, two, does it have enough thrust to weight ratio? So you can see it has uh, like 1.7 1. 1. thrust to weight ratio. And uh, more than 4,000 Delta V, which should be enough for descent and ascent since um, it's supposed to only take 1,800 each, each way. 
Now we're of course setting up our utilities, some ladders and things so that we can get crew on and off more easily. And I think uh, we're gonna attach some science because why not? Always bring some science with you. You never know if you wanna do more science. Uh, and parking it up under that, that docking uh, clamp is actually a pretty good spot for it. This isn't gonna need anything else. We don't need to worry about this performing any docking maneuvers. Um, it is, however, probably going to be, we're, we're looking at some parachute options to see if we actually have this uh, ship use Duna's atmosphere to help slow down. Now we're not putting on a heat shield because uh, we just found there wasn't any heating when slowing down, coming down to Duna last time. So those parachutes should be plenty to get us taken care of. Now we're getting ready to stage this and package it up so that we can sort of use it and run with it in a mission in a aerodynamic way. We have a new tool available to us, this uh, launch, this launch tower thing. So if we connect those together, we can get rid of that um, during the launch. Now it's time to, command, uh, to connect a command module for the purpose of bringing all three of our Kerbins back. So we're gonna need a spot for the pilot of the command module, a spot for the pilot who's going down the lander, and of course, a spot for Bill. So we're just making sure that we have all of that available. We were looking uh, at the crew cabin possibility, but this needs to have its own independent control. So we're gonna use the, I think at the end of the day, we end up using the, just the uh, command module here. All right, command module set up. So typical re-entry configuration. Now we're setting up communications for everything so they can all talk to each other. And we are on to our interplanetary stage. So we're trying to figure out how to make sure this thing has enough uh, resources. It needs power. It needs communication. And obviously it needs uh, a, enough Delta V to push the whole stack to low Dubin and Duna orbit. <clears throat> um, this stage is probably assuming that we have, have uh, created a circularized Kerbin orbit. So we're trying to figure out how to make sure that we have plenty of Delta V and of course fixing any issues that we need to have. Um, a tip for all you guys, make sure you use uh, extra reaction wheels when you have gigantic masses because having those things be more maneuverable with reaction wheels is actually really, really useful. I'm starting to do that in my post, uh, my post, primary post career missions, where I just use extra RCS or extra control wheels, and sometimes put RCS even if I'm not sure if I need it. It just ends up being useful almost all the time. So now we're seeing that this stage just doesn't have quite enough delta V to do its work going back and forth to Duna. So we're trying a couple of different options to grab some more delta V. Uh, some detachable fuel tanks possibly but that doesn't seem to um, that doesn't seem to work the build system doesn't really recognize them so we uh, end up having to try something a little bit different here I think what we end up doing is just <laughs> attaching some big tanks with their own engines because that'll report Delta V for each of the stages and then we can go back and basically asparagus stage this rocket so that it has a bunch more Delta V available to it. Now all we need to do is figure out how to get these things positioned right, aerodynamic, so they don't completely blow off our, our launch trajectory. Taking a look at the uh, idea of some speed brakes, because having those to control our descent rate could be useful. Now it's back to the uh, launcher or the uh, interplanetary stage to get get some. Oh yeah, we do launch towers around around the whole thing. Kind of fun. That's a little bit of extra mass that we'll take during liftoff, but we won't need to carry with us in open space. So we're gonna get that configured. Now we need to get this whole thing lifted up out of the atmosphere. 
and we're just double checking how much delta v we actually have for our return phase so it looks like we don't need the uh the other big tank we can actually consolidate a little bit here run those stages together try to get things sorted out so we can actually have the right amount of delta v in everything now we're on the launcher stage So this launcher, basically, it's pretty straightforward. We're uh, treating these like three separate rockets that happen to be super glued together. Uh, with the exception of the, the middle stage is going to be running the, um, the orbital maneuvering engine, which is very, very efficient once it's in a vacuum. Otherwise, it totally sucks. Turns out a lied. Looks like we're throwing... Uh, Either skippers or mainsails all around. Skippers all around it is. This gives us not quite enough delta, uh, not quite enough thrust to weight. So back to the mainsails we go. A little bit more fuel everywhere to make sure we have enough delta V to lift this whole thing up and set up our multi stage. So we have some asparagus stage going, uh, staging going on in. The different configurations once again throwing a reaction wheel on because as this ship is going to be quite large it's going to be very difficult to maneuver as it is a kind of a awkward shape starting things together and getting the launch platform put together now we just do our final checks to make sure we have our power situation taken care of our power generation situation taken care of any communications we need and science and stuff. And once again, I'm, I'm throwing on a little bit of RCS. We'll just use whatever RCS is in the command pod. I'm not actually adding any additional RCS fuel. Um, just to dock before doing crew transfers. We save the mission. Make sure the correct amount of staff are in the correct places for the mission. And this thing is essentially ready to launch as soon as we do a final check of all of our staging. So we're going to go for our, all of our staging. First stage gets us into orbit. A little bit more fine tuning apparently. Oh, more fuel. Sometimes you just need more fuel because the Delta V and stuff you're concerned about. But we still have a thrust to weight of 1.7, which is definitely good enough. Double check our staging. Those stages are good. Then we get rid of the, uh, the all those jet towers. Then we're on to our main engines. Uh, we do hook up asparagus staging for the upper stage so that while all three engines are firing, it's continually dumping fuel into the center stage, which means um, it will be full when those outer stages are done. And then we figure out our landing stage and double check our crew. A couple of final things are going on here. Obviously, we need some parachutes <laughs> on our command module or we're never going to make it back alive. And... Uh, Looks like our communication's in order. So this thing should be pretty much all set. <clears throat> a little bit of battery power here and there, never hurt anybody. Want to make sure that the lander has enough power since it's not generating its own. Uh, we're actually putting on a little uh, solar panel, so it is generating our own now. And now we're down to details like aerodynamics for enhanced launch stability. Let's get this thing launched. So here we are on the launch pad, a pretty standard, straightforward launch with this thing. I have to remember this uh, particular design because this rocket turned out to be quite capable with its multi-stage, multi-asparagus um, setup. And we're getting into our circularization burn here where we just make sure that we have a circular orbit and everything is good. And then we are ejecting from Kerbin. In fact, we're doing our Trans Duna injection right now. Coming up, we have our Duna injection burn. All of this using this asparagus staged uh, outer stages of rocket with plenty of fuel and capability for this mission. Now that we're in orbit, established a stable orbit, and we're aligned with our landing site, it's time to get the landing module 
decoupled and on its way. So here we are landing, uh, coming down fairly close. It's really hard to hit these pinpoint accurate things, so you want to have plenty of de Delta V to fly around with. We deploy the drogues to begin slowing our descent because ground is coming up awfully fast and we're not going to make that uh, canyon anyway, so we know we have to fly this thing over there uh, like a, you know, like a lander, like a VTOL basically. Good parachute deployment makes me happy. And as soon as our rocket sort of uh, falls over to more its full retrograde setup with respect to surface, in just a little bit here, we kick on the engines and get the parachutes to kind of go away. Here we go. Engines turned on. And we are thrusting up, slowing our descent. The parachutes are gone. So now we're going to go ahead and take over flying and aim ourselves towards our destination here. So we're just maintaining level thrust, basically letting this thing uh, fly, hover along. Uh, we're not really losing much ground altitude. We push over again to get more speed. And we're coming up on the landing site. So we're landing on the other side of the monument. I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of Delta V and stuff like that, getting the perfect landing right next to the other craft. But with this thing down and secured, it's time to go get Bill out of his craft, which uh, has blown over at some point in his mission. So he's on the ground and on his way, coming up to the lander to join us. An easy peasy climb up this ladder. We are practically laid out the welcome map for him. Repeatedly pressing the F key to climb up the different spots allows us to board our spacecraft. And we've recovered all the science that Bill had on his person from his mission. So with Bill and the science on board, it's time to get out of here. First, we're lifting off completely vertically and uh, establishing an orbit. And once done, now it's up to docking. So we're flying the mothership using RCS here to complete this docking maneuver. Things are joined up. All of our science and Bill is now on board the main vessel so it's time to get out of here, leaving Duna's sphere of influence. Staging off our additional mass that we no longer need and continuing our burn to leave Duna's sphere of influence where we will then plan our Kerbin encounter. After a trans injection and all those other burns that we've already done in previous episodes, now we're fine tuning our periapsis for re-entry. And lastly, splashdown in the waters of Kerbin to bring home all this sweet, sweet science, as well as Bill Kerbin, uh, Kerman, back to base. So let's take a look at an inventory of how much science we actually clawed back. 1,620 science total now available. So we're gonna use that in upcoming episodes of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 2. Until then, I'm Sim Gamer.